what's good y'all it's boy ross back again with another video so y'all know we had to check this one out jim Cornette reviews anarchy in the arena aew double or nothing 2024 i have been legitimately waiting for this because i know and we all know if you know anything about jim Cornette, he is not a fan of these type of matches understandably so he's from a wrestling period where they didn't do such things and if people saw some of these things being done in the business they viewed it as garbage wrestling i knew for a fact as soon as i seen darby allen not darby allen well him being hung up upside down for the remainder of the match but seeing jack perry set a blaze oh i knew i knew jim was gonna love this this is what we all been waiting for we're gonna check this out should be a hilarious one it's over 21 minutes sit back relax this is going to be funny as hell Propping my eyelids open with thumbtacks and f***ing toothpicks, I was able to watch the last match on this marathon event. Holes in the arena. <laughs> the Lollipop Guild versus Team AEW. So let's just give these people's names because we want to make sure we know who was responsible for this. You had Maddie and Nikki, the buckaroos. You had their friend O'Cody, and then their other friend Jungle Jack, and they were taking on the formerly best tag team in the world, now reduced to flunkies, FTR, mm -hmm. and Brian Danielson, who the people still love no matter what kind of shit he's in, mm -hmm. and bless his little pea pig and heart, Darby Allen has come back from the dead because Kingston was hurt and... So Darby was wearing a face mask to protect his broken nose, but the face mask had thumbtacks on it. <laughs> because we can't be allowed to forget for a second that all these guys dream <laughs> of being indie mud show jack-offs instead of major <laughs> superstars on television. So oh thumbtacks. Because <laughs> it's cool. Because it's cool, man. It's cool. Jim Cornette, yeah. come on. During... The last member of the heel team's entrance, which was Jungle Jack off, the baby faces just attacked everybody <laughs> on the floor, except for Darby, because his music was playing, and then he just ran in and joined it with the face mask. And then the music kept playing when the heels took over. And then <laughs> at the same time as this is supposed to be the top angle in the company and all the main event people in a violent match and a violent feud the buckaroos have to do their comedy to make sure that nobody takes anything seriously so maddie gets on the microphone and says cut the music and play a banger our new theme music and they start playing that and some people are fight it's a sloppy fight on the floor and some people <laughs> are fighting and some are walking <laughs> and then brian says turn that shit off and play the greatest theme music ever. And then they play the final countdown that Tony paid however much money. He definitely probably paid some money for that. To, to play on it while the fight continues. They're in the stands. It's not lit. The cameras <laughs> can't catch half of it. Some guys are in the breezeway. Some are in the people. It's <clears throat> at one point they did a four box to show four different groups of action, mm -hmm. but they had two different shots of the same two guys <laughs> in two of the boxes. And Darby oh. did a coffin drop off the bleachers onto some guys. And the song was great, and the people were loving it. Mm -hmm. And they were waving their arms, and they're singing along. But meanwhile, as soon as they... <laughs> Maddie then gets the fucking microphone again and tells him to cut that music because we're over budget. It's costing too much. When the music cuts off, it's just a sloppy fucking fight. And the people start chanting. We want music. We want music. <laughs> <sighs> I said earlier, this is the biggest mess I've ever seen as a match or a television product. Because they couldn't follow it. They couldn't shoot it. It was a mess. I mean, yeah. 
anytime they do these anarchy in the arena matches, they, you, there's a good chance you're going to miss a lot of shit because they literally, it's just chaos. It's not even really a, technically a match in a sense. It's just brawl. It's a brawl for all. It's a free for all at that point. That's what it comes off as. So I can only imagine that's a logistic nightmare for the production team because you got to have so many things in place. And uh, <laughs> I mean, you're there to see carnage. That's pretty much all I can say about it. And it was a slow, sloppy fight everywhere but the ring. And then Jack off and Darby go to the to the back parking lot and fight in a tub of ice water <laughs> and use a fake lead pipe. And that Danielson goes for a dive on O'Cody, but O'Cody swings a chair at him and missed him. <laughs> and he was flying at him. How'd he fucking miss him? <laughs> and then one of the Jacksons had to go grab a chair and hit him with it to make up for it. And then in back in the parking lot, Jungle Jackoff drives a big, like, bread delivery truck with his painted scapegoat <laughs> into a pile of trash and wooden pallets that we are supposed to be led to believe that Darby was under. He definitely was. Even though we never it. saw that happen. He the announcers are speculating about it. Speculating. And then Jungle Jackoff is knocked out in the front seat. And come to find out later, of course, the, the secret was out apparently hours after the show was over. He was knocked out so he could be prepared for his return. More on this in a minute. <laughs> then O'Cody was moving around like a senior citizen, beating up FTR by himself. Stoop-shouldered, no physique, <laughs> lack of charisma, pale fucking fishy body. Broken down. Bro, he's going in. Shitty haircut. <laughs> he's going Jesus in. Jesus Christ, I thought you hated Nia Jax. Yeah. Well, well, oh, Cody's even worried. He's not hurting. He can't. His shit couldn't hurt anybody. Oh, Cody, It's bro. so it's weak. so disrespectful, bro. Calling he could jump up and down on wild. me with both feet. I wouldn't notice it. So then Darby staggers back to the ring, apparently from being run over by a truck. <laughs> And fights O'Cody and gets two counts on him. But then the buckaroos powerbomb him onto a bunch of chairs Jeez. and drag him to the stage and put him on the elevating platform that they make their entrance on. And they're telling production by yelling into the camera, take him down, take him down. And the production people, they're playing the music or cutting the music when they say, and they do the thing where they take him down on the elevator. There are logic holes, plot <laughs> holes, whatever you want to call them, in this thing. Oh, my God. Big enough to goddamn get Tony Khan's fucking checkbook through. Yeah, and there's the biggest one, Tony Khan. Mm -hmm. They establish he's sitting at Gorilla. He's running production. Yeah. How come he let all this happen? When you really think about it, and I, I wouldn't even pay attention to it, but yeah, Tony's there. He was actually there. All he had to do was say no. He runs the company. Doesn't matter if they're EVPs or not. He can fire them. He's not, they're, they're not like board of directors or nothing. They're just EVPs. He can fire them. But hey, it's Tony, man. Yes, he he's paying every he's paying the fucking elevator guy. He can't say don't do that. So then they all fight in the back and they beat Danielson up and Spike Powell drive him on a poker chip, a big wooden poker chip. I mean, and then oh Cody put Cash Wheeler through a table immediately after Nikki dove off the tunnel and put Dax through a table. And then Jungle Jackoff wanders into Gorilla mm -hmm. and sees Tony sitting there at the goddamn at the monitor. So again, what the who is telling who how to produce this show? Mm -hmm. And then Jackoff grabs Tony and starts dragging him out. And you can also tell that somehow old Jungle Boy. Looks like he's come through a goddamn bucket of Vaseline. <laughs> yeah. He's shining. Yeah. All of him, he's shining. Well, he had been thrown into an ice bucket earlier. 
No, he's shining with fucking thick goddamn shit on him. Mm -hmm. He ain't wet. He's greasy. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the normal grease either that he has on him. I guess that was their way, like I said in my initial review of the whole situation, is to play it off like, oh, he's still wet. But when you really think about it, like, yeah, that dude is kind of greased up. Pause. So then you understand why what happens next. And as well as the normal cheesiness. So then all of a sudden they cut to a shot on the stage and there's everybody doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> heels and baby faces kind of waiting for what they're supposed to see next. And the announcers are saying, well, where is Tony and Perry? Where are they? Well, they couldn't do anything until Darby came out with the flamethrower. And then here comes Jungle Jack off Dragon Tony. And as he pushes Tony down on the stage, and we'll talk about what happened to Tony later because at least it wasn't on camera. But he shoves Tony Khan down on the stage, does Jungle Jack off, and Darby <laughs> takes the flamethrower and lights him on fire. Yep. They put the stuntman movie gel on him so that it mm -hmm. supposedly doesn't burn your skin within a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And they lighted him on fire with a flamethrower. Lit him on fire. And then suddenly there's Maddie and Nikki with the goddamn fire extinguishers putting him out can you imagine <laughs> anybody stupid enough not only to be lit on fire but to have the jackson boys be the ones to stand by to save you <laughs> you knew something was coming when i don't know what you thought but those fire extinguishers really stood out when all of a sudden they were there at the side of the stage mm -hmm. well yes it it looked like they were goddamn you know ready for the fucking fires after the san francisco earthquake they were going to set the whole building on fire. They were prepared. And, and then the crew jumps on him with towels, putting him the rest of the way out. Well, then the buckaroos and Darby go to the ring and do some shit. Mm -hmm. And Darby kicks O'Cody in the balls and coffin drops O'C also in the nuts. <laughs> right on his fucking dick. Coffin dropped him. <laughs> And the Bucks made the save, and then the Bucks called to the ceiling for a hook. Hmm. And they lower a hook with a rope. Whoever's in production, go ahead. Can I say something here? Because I don't know if you saw it. I think it may have been on the pre-show, but it was the first thing I thought about here. They had Dr. Martha Hart on this show. Oh, no. To announce the Owen Hart tournament for men and women coming up. Because what they said, and they made sure to note that... Tony and her talked about it in December, but the winners of the two tournaments will get title shots at Wembley Stadium. Oh, yeah. Well, I forgot mm. to mention that earlier because it's just coincidental that they <laughs> say that just mm. days, yeah. that one day after yeah. Triple H announces that. Yeah. It, it does look coincidental. They had that tournament. They had the tournament last year. I believe it was last year. And, you know, they, you know, the respective winners they won i think uh the it's like a tournament style belt but that was kind of kind of it and had the you know accolades like hey i won it this year whoever wins they have a get a title opportunity <laughs> so yeah, the timing on that was very coincidental for king of the ring yeah. getting the title matches at SummerSlam, but they talked about it in december my point though is dr martha hart is there in the building while they're gonna hang a goddamn wrestler while yeah. guys who are not trained rig professionals or whatever the fuck you need to be yeah or operating this thing hanging this guy upside down and that's one of those things where it's like mm, when you really think about it like ugh, ugh, i don't know if they should have did that but you know Reading the room type situation. Even though it wasn't terribly high up, it was high enough that he could have broken his neck. Well, it was high up enough that he was upside down and immobilized. And if something had happened and he'd have dropped on his head from 10 feet, wouldn't that pretty much break your neck? He wasn't able to catch himself. He was all tied up and mm. hooked and everything. If you're going to have Martha Hart on these shows, don't <laughs> do things like that. That seems uh. in pretty bad taste. Well, besides that, then... If they they lower the hook, but before they hang him, 
the crowd is just staring while they're tying his legs together, but then FTR makes a comeback on him, but then Maddie hits Dax with a chair and the chair exploded. <laughs> Again, for what? It's like the exploding tennis shoe they had. What For what? And then they got a little more slow heat on Darby until... Oh, Cody put a sleeve of thumbtacks on his arm and hit Cash with the weakest clothesline I've ever seen. <laughs> and then Oh, Cody pulls out a shoe box of these new ridiculous Fruit Loop looking fucking shoes in all kinds of neon colors that the buckaroos are trying to goddamn pedal. Yeah, I think. And they've Reeboks. got thumbtacks on the soles of them. Mm-hmm. And they put. They put the shoes on, and then Matt tells the production to raise Darby upside down like the pinata so they can double super kick him with the thumbtack shoes. Mm-hmm. Brian, I know a lot of people are thinking I'm now lying. No. Am I lying about any of this? No. Nope. No, all of this happened multiple times in the middle of this brawl. The Bucks just started giving stage commands. And then they went to kick Danielson, but Danielson grabbed the, the shoe and pulled off one of the tack shoes and hit the Bucks with it and then kicked them a bunch and then stomped them and then gave them chair shots. And then <laughs> the fans start chanting, please help Darby. Darby. Yeah. Please help, because he's just hanging there. He's just hanging upside down, bro. And then after all this, the Buckaroos stopped Danielson and give him the knee lift and jungle jack off comes back in from being set on fire <laughs> and as danielson is crawling over to help darby or try to help darby jungle jack off runs over and hits him with a knee lift and pins him yeah the guy who got set, set on blaze. fire came back to win, win the, the match. match that made no sense i'm gonna be honest none of this really made sense but he didn't even look burnt. I was like, he should have been immobilized. That's how you write somebody off. And he won the match. <sighs> no burns. This right here, and everybody involved in it, <laughs> and Tony Khan, who was involved in it, are the reasons why AEW will never get better. It will never turn a profit. It will never get a mainstream audience. It will continue to lose viewers instead of gaining viewers. And it will continue to be a place where people go to spend most of their time collecting a check for being hurt and <laughs> operated on. It was embarrassing to anybody oh who's ever God. been a professional in this industry and gave a shit about it. And it took four and a half out, four hours and 32 minutes. That's a long time. For him to get finished with this fucking dreck. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what else to say. Everybody involved in this should be ashamed of themselves if they willingly went along with it. And if they were forced to because a member of their family was being held hostage, <laughs> I'll, I'll let them off with a warning. <laughs> I don't think anyone's embarrassed. I think when you go to work with AEW and go to work with those specific people, you kind of take on the Young Bucks ethos, which is mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Anyone who criticizes what you do or tells you to mm -hmm. think about it a different way, they are the enemy. They are wrong. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And this is what you get. We've had now a few anarchy in the arenas. The crowds get smaller and smaller, and they got a nice crowd here for this. And I believe it was smaller than the previous time they had been there. But it's, it's good for what they've been doing lately. And again, they're doubling down on the stuff with the Bucks. The Bucks were on the NBA show the other day giving out custom championship belts to the host of the show, from what I understand. Can you imagine when they are introduced on a mainstream television show as any kind of professional wrestlers, what people sit at home go, what the fuck? It looks like a Saturday Night Live skit. It looks oh, like yeah. two of the guys on Saturday Night Live put on some facial hair glued it to their face, and are pretending to be wrestlers. The, the, the Sammy Hagar impersonator from Madison Square Garden back in 1986. Yeah, that's a very good reference there. And then Jack Perry. It's important to note, whatever you think of Jack Perry and his stupid decisions, 
and his stupid attitude. And even before that, we know stories about Jungle Stooge. I mean, there's other things. Yeah. He's a little weasel who goes crying to his fucking big brothers. Whether that's all there or not, the fact that Tony Khan saw this guy, rumor has it, doing this gimmick, the scapegoat, on a New Japan show in Chicago, and was like, oh my god, I can't believe how great this is. Mm -hmm. And now they gave him the win here. There's another example of investing time, energy, push, wins, and Danielson will lose to anyone. So it's not really yeah. that big a deal at this point. Yeah. But still, Jack Perry, he's tiny. He's not convincing. He is not only tiny and not convincing, it's embarrassing. <laughs> the uh, because he's it, it, unconvincing doesn't cover it. He's obviously would like the other two, playing wrestler, <laughs> acting like something he's not. They envision themselves as something they are not. They were helped along in this delusion, and some element of mass hypnosis for the general public by the little bubble of indie fans that they had for a while that never fads never last mm -hmm. and the, the 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 elite was the hula hoop and the pet rock and the only one that it lasted with was tony khan and now it's five years past its fucking expiration date and he's still stuck with these morons as the stars of his company <laughs> which is again you could have predicted this five years ago, which is why I did. Who he was sold on getting into business with was going to be the, the one half of his downfall, Tony's, and the other half was going to be he thought he could do this shit despite never having done it before and now has proven he can't. He can write checks mm -hmm. and his dad can make a lot of money. And as long as they want to spend it, then they'll be around. But this is not good, and it's getting worse, and nobody can claim differently. And, you know, they say, like you said, they said the video game was going to be the difference maker in profit yeah. and loss. And the video game, and now I guess now you can play it for free? Yeah, I've seen that, like the video game. It, it, bro, I think they, I don't know if I've seen someone posted it like Walmart or something. It was like $2 or some shit, like the video game. It's it you if the fact that you're able to get that game for like two dollars or whatever the case is so soon is kind of telling. Hell, last year's WWE 2K, uh, what was that, 23 or whatnot? You can still, you know, you may not get it full price, but they still gonna charge you like half the price for that. They still gonna charge you for all, even older two games, 2K games for like half the price or whatever or lower, but it ain't like no two dollars type shit so yeah it's they failed on that front too certain streaming services is this what i'm hearing in june playstation uh, has a program playstation plus where each month you get free games usually mm -hmm. they're not brand new games they're games that have been out for a while they've exhausted their run i've gotten some great games i'm a subscriber i'm gonna be able to get fight forever finally without paying for it <laughs> and fight forever is now there this comes off us seeing that it was being sold for three dollars and three dollar mm -hmm. three dollar discount bin at Walmart. That mm -hmm. was after we saw it was ten dollars, mm -hmm. which was after it was thirty dollars. I think it launched at sixty, mm -hmm. and there's no one playing the game online. Mm -hmm. And so now the the rights renewal. So they're expecting a TV network that doesn't live and die with wrestling. Doesn't have to if they're willing to give up the NBA because it's too much money. Yeah and other people are willing to pay more, then they're certainly willing to give up wrestling if they can't get it for the price they want. Yep. And does anybody, is are these people stupid enough to think, I'm talking about the AEW fans, that, well, they didn't get the NBA, so now they'll give that NBA money to Tony? I don't No, see just go, you can buy the best hooker on fucking <laughs> Bourbon Street for $5,000 doesn't mean you're going to give a goddamn crack whore in a trailer the same five grand. That's that's a wild comparison. So when the when the rights fee comes in, eh, we'll just keep the same deal or maybe a small increase or maybe we'll give you less because your ratings are down. Then, like I said before, what's he going to do? Say, well, fuck you. Yeah, you ain't gonna I'll just choice. put it on YouTube. 
Because who else is interested in wrestling these days when it's not the number one wrestling? Mm -hmm. And the numbers for the program that exists on a major network are going down. How does that call for a raise? Well, real quick before we wrap things up, and that was uh, AEW Double or Nothing, but Jim... It certainly was. I'm <laughs> sorry with my attitude today, but having to sit through, <laughs> especially over the past couple of oh days... Oh, my God! And then having to spend four and a half hours of my time on that, I was somewhat verklempt. <laughs> Bro, when I say I was waiting for that, I was waiting for that, man. I think we all were. I mean... The match was what it was. Did I have fun with it? Of course, but it's not to be taken seriously. The one thing I can always say that I will remember is I've never seen anyone get set ablaze with a flamethrower in wrestling. I don't know if I'm going to see it again. Maybe so. But I, I, just, I just don't ever think I remember seeing that. And I, I don't know if I'll ever see that again. That, that will always stay with me. AEW did something good there. That image will always stay with me. Comment down below. And let me know some other videos you all want me to check out. Appreciate all the love and support y'all got y'all showing on the channel, man. Road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.